getting easy shots at the basket helps our three point shooters get cleaner looks from the perimeter. So it all kind of goes ties with one another, but those are a couple of things that we have to do better. Thank you very much. Thank you. Chase. Hey Scott, just uh, first of all, what were you guys able to accomplish today at practice? We had one of our better practices. Um, we did we did some things that we need to work on. Um, we got a lot of shots. We got some execution. Talked about talked about the position that we're in, and the guys are. We had a very uh, practice was very a lot of energy, enthusiasm. We're excited about the opportunity. Uh, I know we're down zero two, but we still got a chance to to make this a series, and we still have a chance to to play better in front of our home crowd. And our guys are guys. We had a good practice. I was very pleased with the energy and the and the, they had some fun out there. And um, what can you? How would you kind of describe your, your point guard depth? Um, I, you know, including Howell Neto in that conversation, even though I know he plays other spots, but just Westbrook, Ish Smith, and Howell Neto, what you have in those three guys? Um, great, great depth. You got a, one of the best point guards in the league, obviously a Hall of Famer. You got two scrappy um, backup guards. Uh, one's One's as fast as any guard in the league, and his change of direction pace, uh, change of direction, and his pace of play is is high level. And you got um, Howu just plays with that fierce competitiveness and leaves everything on the floor mentality. And we got three, you know, three very very good um, players at that position. Mark. Scott, are you able to tell us if Russell practiced today and maybe his availability for tomorrow? No, he did not practice today. Got some treatment. Um, that's all. That's all I know is as of right now. He's got treatment yesterday. I'm sure he's going to do it around the clock like he always does. But he's 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 always uh, tries to put himself in the he's. Put himself in the best position to play, but you know, we'll see how he feels tomorrow. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Olivia. Hey, Scott. Um, as you guys have been able to kind of regroup, settle back in, be here at home, what's the vibe um, from the guys these past couple of days, especially today at practice? Um, good. And any, I mean, any playoff series, um, Three things can happen. You can win the first two, you can lose the first two, or you can split the first two. And that's why I told them there's there they did what they were supposed to do. Now we got a chance to do what we are supposed to do. When our home for we play well at home. Um, we got a, a lot of guys that are excited about this opportunity. If we regroup, we know we can play better. They played well. They played well with. You know, they're, they're, they're a good team and they're loaded. They got a lot of veterans. They got a lot of guys that know how to play and they got potentially an MVP uh, and they got high level all-stars on their team. But our guys are excited about the opportunity. We know we're going to have a, a, great, a great crowd and they're going to be into the game and we're going to play with that same spirit that put us in this position to be in the playoffs. Alex. Hey, Scott, hope you're doing well. Um, you know, I know there's been a lot of points this season where you guys kind of had your backs against the wall, where you guys were struggling. And at a lot of those points, you know, you said you were confident that the team was going to get it together. I, I know down 2-0 is a tough spot, especially in the first round. You know, where, where's your confidence level at? And where, uh, um, you know, in terms of your confidence in the team and in terms of the chances of you guys turning the series around? Well, I'm confident. Confident in the group, I've seen I've seen the group um, perform and fight for one another during some really interesting times, and we've overcome a lot to get in this position. And we've been in we've been in uh, t 
tougher positions all of us have. Um, not just this year, just you know, get to this spot that we're all in. And you know, we're not, it's not not good to be down zero two, but it is still an opportunity for us to fight back together and and get a chance to to win on our, our home floor is it's a great position to be in. Not the they, they have the best position being up two zero. There's nothing I can't can't um, hide from that, but we got a chance. We got a chance to go out there and compete. Told the guys today, um, we're not gonna we're not gonna shoot as bad as we did. We didn't make free throws last game, and we we're two for 20, 22. You know, I don't I don't see that happening. I I, I think we can at least make three of them. Um, but I I love the fact that we're gonna go out there and compete. We had a great practice today, and that's. That's how I judge, you know, every day. Did we did we take care of business today, and then we move on to the next day, and we got another opportunity to to get this series, you know, one to one to two. Thank you, Scott. You're welcome. Fred. Hey, Scott. Um, I I I know you guys have have loaded up on Embiid in part, and and that obviously contributes to this, but. Simmons and Harris are shooting a combined 17 shots a game in the restricted area as perimeter players. What can you guys do to just make it a little more, at least the shot attempts for them a little bit more difficult? Well, we got it. We got to do a better job of containing the ball and our closeouts have to be better. Um, and then we got to, we got, we do, we could do some things. We, we can make some adjustments and we, we will. Hopefully that can help. Um, Got to do a better job. There's no question. Their 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 shot attempts are are their efficiency is outstanding, and their shot profile has been great. We got We got to be able to manage that better. Um, if Simmons puts us in a tough position, we got to put him on the free throw line. We got to not give him layups, but put him on the free throw line. Let him earn two two there, which, you know, he's not a great free throw shooter. So we're definitely, that's, that's in, that's in the, in the mix as well. Neil. Hey, Scott, uh, obviously you've been able to see now two games, what Philly's trying to do to Brad um, from their standpoint, Ben Simmons is on him a lot. Have you and the coaches been able to think of ways to, you know, maybe get Brad off of him more where he's seemingly having more effectiveness. Isn't Brad playing pretty well already? What's he, what's he shooting? Agreed, but he's shooting a lot what better. Do do? What do you want him to do, average 50? But it's just, there is a difference between when Ben is on him and when every, anybody else is on him. He's a good player. Good player guarding him and a good player. Um, what they do. Good players play hard. Brad plays hard. Brad, no one's going to stop Brad. He's still averaging basically his average. So he's going to have good games. He's going to have some games he can be better. We can be better as a group. It's not about, it's not about Brad. We got to be better as a group. Um, but Brad's the last of my worries. I, I, I worry about a lot of things, but that's not one of them. But thanks for your concern. All right, last question to Zaysuri. Hi, Coach. Uh, uh, Raul Neto is uh, struggling. Is he still uh, recovering from the injury or is uh, suffering the sixer physicality? No, I think we got to find we got to find some more opportunities. Um, I talked to him today. Uh, he, 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 I got to do a better job and he has to be able to he had a couple of shots that he passed up. I don't want him to pass up one shot. Uh, those are things that we talked about, and we need we need his aggressive play on both ends of the floor. Um, we haven't, you know, first game I thought. I mean, we played well enough to win. Last game, we didn't we didn't do what we needed to do, but they they did what they had to do, and we missed a lot of good looking threes and free throw line. Uh, attempts. So 
Alu is a big part of what we've done to get to this point. And uh, he's going to be, he's another guy that will play well tomorrow night. I'm wondering uh, what makes an ideal lob pass for you? Like, where do you like the passes thrown? Is there anything that makes one lob pass better than the other for you? Um, to be honest, I really don't have a preference. <laughs> uh, I just really just, you know, jump. Uh, other than that, you know, just anything that I really can control midair, in my opinion. You know, sometimes lob passes can be, you know, I would say out of control or anything like that. But just really just anything I control in the air. And something that I would have, if like I would have to, something that I could catch to be able to come back down, maybe kick it out or go back back up with it. Just something that I can be able to control, maintain. Like if I would have to go get it with one hand, duck it with one hand, or if I would have to go get it with two and just lay the ball in. Or just, you know, certain instances. It's really just not a preference. It's just basically really just how it's thrown at the time, I would say. And um, some of the guards on this team had varying experiences with uh, lob threats before. Brad said he'd never really played with one. What's it been like just kind of developing a chemistry with those guys? And, and were there any conversations about, like, hey, this is where I like the passes thrown? Um, no, nah, I really don't. I really didn't even had a conversation with anybody about it. Um, but the chemistry, I mean, you know, it was just like clockwork. It was, it was going to happen, you know, quick. I'm pretty, like, in my mind, I knew it was going to happen quick sooner or later just because of, you know, the type of guards that Russ and Brad are. Um, just getting downhill and just either getting the ball up on the rim or just getting the ball in there for me. Other than that, you know, the chemistry, it, it was, you know, natural, basically. Um, we're still building. Uh, um, but other than that, yeah, the chemistry was still, like, the chemistry was natural. And just like I said, just having two guards and pretty much anybody else on the team that's really like able to throw the lob pass or just really just, you know, get, gain attention when they're attacking the basket, certain things like that. It's really good because, I mean, you know, you're making each other look good at the end of the day. Olivia. Hey, Daniel, um, this will be your first playoff game as a wizard at Capital One Arena. How excited are you to, you know, be able to experience that at least 50 percent of the capacity there at Cap One this Saturday? Oh, uh, I'm excited. I can't wait for it. I know the energy is going to be, you know, you know, trying to blow the roof off the building. Because I mean, it's a lot of fans. I'm pretty sure it's a lot of people that's been waiting for this moment, just being able to get back in the arena. You know, it was like a certain capacity at first. Now it's like at 50 percent, like you had said. Um, so I just can't wait. Can't wait to see all the fans. I can't wait to, you know, just have that energy that's been missing from, you know, NBA arenas throughout this whole year, really. Yeah. And as you guys have been able to kind of settle down from the road trip, what's the vibe like in the locker room, especially after today's practice? Oh, um, it was good. I mean, you know, guys came in, got their work in. Basically, you know, day in, day out of the NBA, to be honest. Um, then when we got done with practice, it was a high intense practice somewhat. Um, we got up and down, you know, we got a lot of energy throughout the gym and stuff. So it was, it was just good just to, I would say, get that in today to basically get us in the right mindset for tomorrow instead of guys, you know, coming in and feeling like, you know, ah, we got to hold our heads down. We're going to, you know, we got a lot of more games. We got a couple of more games in this series. We're going to see what we can do tomorrow to turn, turn the tide with this series for sure. So today was a good thing just to really just get like the energy back and get the mindset back to go play winning basketball. Thanks. Ava. Hey, Daniel, um, we caught up with you, obviously, after your, your first playoff game. Just wondering how or I guess in, in what areas of your game did you feel more prepared going into game two, if anything felt different for you? Um, nothing really feel different. It's just, you know, just on the defensive end, really just not trying to get in foul trouble early. That's just my main thing. It's really kind of been like the toughest thing for me to kind of like master right now especially since um we're in the playoffs and stuff it's going to be very intense it's going to be very energetic and it's going to be there's going to be a lot of things that doesn't go our way you have to play through that sometimes fouls are going to be called that we don't understand and we don't agree with anything like that we just have to play through it but really just my main thing is just improving on the foul side of it. you know my conditioning will be there it'll be better my physicality will be there. It'll be better. But just really just my main thing to help me stay on the floor and be able to help the team is just keeping myself out of foul trouble. If I can hold myself accountable with that, I mean, the game is, the game is going to come to me, you know. Um, but really just other than that, I really just didn't really like focus on working on anything, working on my touch around the basket. That's pretty much it. Obviously working on my free throws because I missed a lot of free throws last game for sure. Um, but other than that, yeah. 
And uh, Coach Brooks said it was a really good day of practice for you guys. You just obviously spoke about the the vibe a little bit, but what what makes for a good day of practice or a good film session at this time of year for you? Um, just basically what we did, you know, just coming in and you know getting up and down and just getting a good feeling, you know, just working, getting like working before or after practice, and just coming in together as a team and just having fun and having a good day of practice, having a lot of energy in the drills that we do, having a lot of energy in the conversations that we have, certain things like that, and just go day in, just coming in, minute in, minute out, and just, you know, really just trying to lock in to be able to turn this tide in this series. Neil. Hey, Daniel. Uh, Scott was saying a few days ago that, you know, because of how up-tempo they like to play, that, you know, it's conceivable that a big man can, you know, get tired after 10, 12 minutes of consecutive playing time. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like for you that, you know, there is a threshold where you start to, you know, maybe get a little winded and your play might decrease a little bit? Yes. I mean, it's the game, it's the game of basketball, you know, like I said, my condition is going to be there. Sometimes it's terrible. Sometimes it's better than what it was the day before. I have to really just maintain on consistency on where my condition it is when it comes to just doing things off the court and stuff. So, yeah, um, my conditioning, you know, is wopsided at the time. You know, I've, I've had somewhat of a weird year, I'm not going to lie to you. But other than that, I don't stop working, you know, whether I'm tired or not. Fatigue sets in most of the time. And, you know, I asked out every now and then when it comes to it because uh, of the honor system when it comes to guys, you know, asking out when they're tired or anything like that. But other than that, I really just try my best to fight through fatigue because, you know, just – kind of letting fatigue set in, you know, teams can see that as a weakness and they can go at you. So most of the time when it come, when it sets in, I just really try to, you know, get guys in that, you know, are fresh or anything like that. So I don't hold the team back because I don't want to be out there and be a weak link, especially seeing, especially when I'm like, you know, fatigued because fatigue can set in and it can take a lot of things. It can take a toll on you a lot of ways. It can take a toll on your mental. It can take a toll on you physically and it can mess up your game a lot. And that's one thing I really don't want to really just get in the way of like the team's success, you know? So if it, if it takes me having to come out because I'm tired, I'm all for it. You know, if the coach sees it, I would be totally fine with him just saying, okay, good. Okay. Gav is tired. And I understand it because I mean, you know, the game of basketball is it's a game of runs, certain things like that guys are going to get tired in certain situations. I know it's on me to be able to have my condition enough to where I can withstand a longer stint whenever I go in the game. But other than that, at the end of the day, you know, I mean, I understand. Thanks, Daniel. I like the shirt. Thank you. <laughs> Christos. Hey, Daniel, hope you're doing well. Speaking about the level of physicality and the aggressiveness on game two, what do you need to improve on game three about uh, that aspect of your game? And how important is it to set the tone from the first minute of the game? Um, It's really important because, you know, Philadelphia is a real physical team, you know, from the one spot to the five spot. We can set the tone early and, you know, up the physicality and take the guys out, you know, that are usually trying to, um, I would say, dictate the game. We're going to have a good night. You know, we just have to be, we just have to be the person that throws the first punch because the last two games they've thrown the first punch and we really hadn't even thrown back. And we've had stints to where we've kind of thrown back, but other than that, we haven't been throwing punches, in my opinion, you know. Um, and it's just, you know, the level of physicality that they come out with, it's like, it's intense. And, you know, it's, I would say us coming out, we have to learn to adjust to it. You know, if they throw a punch, be ready to throw another punch back. Cause it's going to be a dog fight for sure. You know, Philly's a real physical team. It's not going to be easy. So we have to come out and just be prepared for it. It's going to be just basically being prepared for, you know, prime time boxing match. You got to come out and be able to take punches and be able to throw punches as we're taking them to. Last question to Jay Suri. Hi, Daniel. How can you guys avoid to get in foul trouble against a, a center like Embiid, which is very good uh, to get fouls? And how can you uh, try to uh, match him and defend uh, effectively against him? Um, when it comes to fouls, certain things like that, uh, we just have to we just have to really just kind of like avoid getting into you know the things that gets him his fouls. You know, he kind of does a lot of sweep throughs and certain things like that. And it's a lot of things where, like, if you get your hand in or anything like that, as long, as long as he throws his head back or gets his hands in the air with the ball and they see any type of contact on him, they're going to call the foul, plain and simple. Um, but 
just pretty much it. We're just playing as, as the best. We're pretty much playing the best defense we possibly can. You know, hands out, airplane defense. You know, if he gets into the point where he's trying to, you know, draw fouls with the sweep through or just like, you know, trying to gain unnecessary contact from a guy that's defending him, we just have to be smart on that. We got to play with our feet and our hands. <laughs> but um, really, yeah, and that pretty much sums it up on just pretty much what we got to do with playing with him defensively. Just got to play with our feet and not our hands, move our feet, stay in front of him. No flopping, no really just trying to take charges on him or anything like that. Because we're not going to get no calls with a guy like Joel. You know, he's a physical guy. But, you know, there's going to be a lot of calls that are not going to be called when it comes to him. Hey, Ish, uh, what did you guys – Scott said that you guys had a really good practice. What did you guys feel like you were able to accomplish? And how much scrimmaging were you guys able to do or not do? Uh, not a lot, but we did some uh, – three on two, two on one, just to get up and down, get some confidence. Um, you know, uh, I think that's the biggest thing. Obviously, you know, these last two games, uh, play well game one, gave ourselves a chance to win. Game two, they played really well. Uh, we didn't play as well. Uh, so it was good to just get out there, see the ball going, to, you know, through the through the net and, and uh, get a good little, you know, get some energy, get some juice, get ready for game three. Ava, Ish. Um, obviously, it was a it was a team a bad game for everybody uh, last game. But you were really good in game one individually, and you had some really good performances in the play-in game. I know you try to not overthink this stuff, but what do you feel like had been working well for you in the really high pressure situations? Yeah. Um, first and foremost, I'm mad at myself game two because uh, just I don't know. We just it, I didn't personally bring the juice. I missed some shots. Uh, wasn't more in attack mode to the rim, kind of settled a little bit more. Uh, defensively, could have been better. Um, but just bringing the energy, bringing the juice. Um, hey, man, as you know, when you get in the playoffs, you got to take it up to another level. It's a must. You got to take it to another level. And, and a lot of times you don't have to play perfect. You just got to play with the extra gear, extra juice, extra energy. Uh, defensively and offensively. Um, and uh, so I think that's kind of been working. But game game two, I wasn't too happy with myself. So, um, you know, I'm hoping and praying that I, I bounce back. And uh, we're going to all have to bounce back in a big way um, to play against a really good Philly team and play well. How do you, at the end of a really long season, especially this season where everybody's tired, everybody's beat up, how do you find that to, to get to another level when you're, like you said, it's not even just tactically, you're just, you have to go really hard. Yeah, you just um, just finding the will to win, uh, not one to lose. Um, you just find it, you know, deep down inside. And, you know, once you start competing, I think you don't even think about it. Uh, once you get out there and you, and you start playing, you know, our, our training staff has done a great job. My coaches have done a great job of kind of giving us the rest that we, you know, we need. And uh, so we get out there and we compete, you don't think about it, you don't over or underthink it. And before you know it, um, you're playing at a high level, you're diving on the floor. And, uh, you know, so I don't think you kind of think about it, you just kind of play. Chase. Um, hey, Ish, uh, going back a few games, I think it was at the end of the first uh, playing game we saw on the broadcast. Um, maybe the game was a little bit out of hand and you were given what seemed like a pretty passionate uh, speech to the team in the huddle. Um, what, what was your message then? Is it, and is it something that can apply to this series? First and foremost, I didn't even know nobody was looking. Uh, I didn't even kind of want anybody to kind of see it. I was just kind of at the moment. I feel like leadership is very strategic and it just depends on whose moment in time it is. We're all the leaders in our own way. And so I guess at the time, I just wanted us to just kind of play and realize the level of play that you got to play in, you know, when it comes to playoff time. You know, that was playoff time for us. The two playing games were playoff games uh, leading into actual playoff, you know, games. So uh, it wasn't nothing crazy I said. It wasn't nothing inspiring. I was just like, listen, we got to play and we got to play harder. We got to play smarter. Can't worry about the referees. We just got to bring another energy and, you know, bring some more juice. And uh, I thought we did that against Indiana. Olivia. Hey, Ish. Um, 
you talk about the playoffs just being different. It's a different kind of energy. How excited are you and this team to be back home at Cap One tomorrow in front of your own fans? I know it's just 50 percent, but that's something. <laughs> Shoot. This, the, uh, Philly felt like it was 100 uh, percent. So, uh, you know, it, we're excited to be back home. Um, you get that extra juice. You get that extra energy. I thought the Philly fans did a great job with an exception of stupidity that one uh, fan did, but bringing the juice, bringing the energy for their team, feeding off of it. And uh, that's what we're hoping and praying for when we come here, uh, you know, for game three. And uh, we, we know that uh, when you got a home game in the playoffs, it just gives you that extra juice, that extra energy, a, a, a 10 point, you know, run or a six zero run feels like, um, you know, an opposing team, like they're down 15 and down 20. So, uh, we know what the fans bring, and uh, we're going to need uh, each and every one of them to be loud. Thanks. Alex? Hey, it's kind of a bit of a follow-up to Chase's question. Um, you know, just what are you telling your teammates ahead of this game? Now, obviously, I know a, a play-in and then being down 2-0 in a series is a bit of a different situation. And then – also, just do you guys kind of see this game as a chance to just totally, you know, change the tides of this series if you can get it to go your way? Alex, you're exactly right, man. Um, you know, all you need is just uh, one game to kind of see, you know, to kind of put a chink in the armor to, to see uh, what we need to do and get some consistency. I, I've been in series where uh, I've been down in the dumps and, and all of a sudden you win one game and you start finding out what needs to be done and then you pick up momentum and, and you start flowing, you start going. And, uh, you know, all you need is uh, one game, but you got to win each quarter. Um, you got to win, you know, each minute. And uh, that's something that coach is kind of focusing on, uh, some things we need to get better at and work at. Uh, but give Philly 100% credit. They did what they were supposed to do and won their two games and uh, at home. And now we have to uh, bounce back for game three. Thanks, Ish. Yes, sir. Christos. Hey, Ish, hope you're doing well. What what do you need to improve as a team about the after the game two? And how important is to to set the tone and uh, be more aggressive on both ends and especially on the defensive end? Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Just being a little bit more aggressive. Um, you know, they they like I said, game two, give them a lot of credit. Um, you know, second shots, rebounding defensively. Uh, we had a couple, you know, possessions to where uh, they got several block shots and the crowd gave them great juice and great energy and, and different things like that. So uh, now we have to, you know, uh, come in in game three, bring that energy, bring that juice. Uh, you know, we got to be the aggressors. Uh, and if we do that and put them on their heels, I think we're going to put ourselves in a good chance to win the game. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, and last question to Chase Marie. I ish, you played in Philadelphia in the process era. I, I want to ask you, could you imagine the Sixer being so good in six years uh, from uh, the time you played there? Yeah, they were, you know, they were eventually going to get there. Uh, yeah, I'm happy for, you know, you know, the, the city, um, you know, they, they endured that, you know, the time uh, they had a plan. Um, uh, Sam Hickey had a plan. Uh, he gave me a great opportunity, he gave uh, TJ McConnell, different guys. Uh, you know, Jeremy Grant was on that team. I had the list to go on, Merlin's done well, and all those guys. So uh, we got a great chance and great opportunity. Uh, and I know I'm missing a lot of guys, other guys, man. But we got a great opportunity to play and prove what we could do. So, you know, I, I'm thankful for that. But, uh, yeah, so for them, fans endured it. I'm happy for them. Uh, did I think they were going to be good eventually? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, again, happy for them. But uh, it's, it's no greater feeling than to uh, – to uh, come back and uh, dethrone the process.